Welcome to Dorker Realms. While most gamers will be familiar with Dungeons & Dragons from the newest edition of the game, there is a movement among some players called the Old School Revival, taking inspiration from the design philosophy of the earliest editions of D&D and bringing them into the modern era. These games and adventures emphasize the weird, the challenging, and the hardcore. Bear witness as our intrepid players explore unusual and dangerous tales in these old school adventures. we will be playing They Served Brandolin Red by Stephen Newton using the Dungeon Crawl Classics role-playing system. These can be found anywhere fine dork games are sold. We go now to the table to delve into Dorker Realms. Welcome back to Dorker Realms, everyone. We have a bit of a special episode this time around because it's Lucky Pierre, a.k.a. Danny's birthday. Yay! Bye-bye! And, uh... Yeah, yeah. I figured he should get a play today instead of, you know, DMing. Also, I want to murder them all. So that's why you're not introducing as a... Uh, I Johnson. am your dungeon master, Ryan Uh-oh. Roberts. And I'm Vox. I'll be playing... We... A variety of characters, yes. because this is a funnel we'll be playing for Dungeon Crawl Classics. Anyone who's not familiar with the Dungeon Crawl Classics funnel system... Each player will be playing four level zero characters who are basically just peasants. Hello, my lord. Need more wood? I wish I was a peasant. I'm a slave. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Mungo. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's start it up, everyone. Does everyone else need to introduce themselves? Oh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I guess that would I'm be... I'm the only one that did so Yeah, you're, you're right. You're the That's only one true. playing. That's true. Ah, I see. Yeah, let's do no some more... No wonder Ryan's so eager to kill all yeah. the characters. Yeah, yeah. More introduction, sure. I'm Danny, a.k.a. Birthday Boy. <laughs> birthday Boy. I'm, I'm playing the Dragon Tear family, consisting of Mungo, <laughs> Devin, Hamish, and Elwyn Dragon Tear. <laughs> and I am Paul. I'll be playing the Letty family. That's Pert Letty. Will Letty, Sten Letty, and Sheila Letty. Uh, I'm Robin. My pronouns are they, them, and my characters have various pronouns. I'm playing the Vitner family, and my characters are Mum, Mondavi, Hess, and Visa Tui. <laughs> Visa Tui. Ah, Visa Tui. Anyone who uh, is good with their root words would know that a Vitner is someone who runs a winery. And since I was interrupted for fl- clarification by... Uh, Nobody cares. D- okay. <laughs> I'll be playing the Whitegrass family, consisting of Matthew, Dwellin, Barnaby, and Mindranar. Ooh, Barnaby Jones. Mindranar. Uh, Barnaby Whitegrass. Oh, Bar- Barnaby Mindranar Whitegrass. Mindranar Whitegrass. All right. So, it is a gray autumn afternoon in the village of Portonel. But the residents are excited and festive. After years of petty feuding, two of the town's most prominent and influential families, the Leddies and the Whitegrass, are finally making peace as the young noble, Sir Hort Leddy, takes the elven beauty, Lady Nala Whitegrass's hand in marriage. The entire town is in attendance, and you are all find your eyes moist with tears of joy as the lanky father, Geralt, orates in a booming voice. And as they consume this wine, symbolizing their spirit, may Lady Nyla and Master Hort become one, whereby only death itself may come between them. The young couple gives each other a loving kiss and begins drinking from two ornate wine goblets. Cheers erupt from the crowd. The newlyweds look at each other with blissfully before you notice Lady Nala start to cough and sputter. She drops her cup where it smashes, spilling its dark contents across the ground. Suddenly, creatures resembling ants the size of men burst up from the earth, and all around you, the cheers of joy begin transforming into screams. To your left, you see Farmer Toto's bald, sunburnt head get clamped between the mandibles of one of the creatures, and with a revolting pop, it explodes like a rotted pumpkin, splattering those around him with skull and blood. You're horrified to see more of the creatures skittering through the crowd, decapitating and disemboweling guests indiscriminately. 
Turning back to the newlyweds, you see one of the beasts grips her Hort's neck between its mandibles. Father Geralt desperately pummels the Ant-Man with his fist, but with a sickening crunch, the beast clamps its pincers tightly together, pushing the young nobleman's head savagely from his torso before scampering back into the forest with its bloody prize in its clutches. As you reach down for your dagger, your hand finds only an empty scabbard. As you now remember how weapons were banned from the ceremony, panic grips the crowd as the chittering beasts continue to rip through the wedding courtyard. One note, Pert, Con uh, Pert Letty has his dagger with him. Sheila Letty has her dagger with her as she's quite lucky and wore the wrong robes today that had an extra dagger in them. And Mum Vittner was actually working the wedding as a haberdasher and has his scissors with him. <laughs> Weddings. <clears throat> Weddings never uh, change. There are eight ants still fighting the rest of the people and moving in to attack you. Roll for initiative. So... Is it one per thing, or do we just... Roll? Each character has an initiative. So I assume Duellen and Barnaby do not have their staves? They do not. As a first-time player, do I add my agility to my initiative? <laughs> <laughs> no, Danny. Okay. Uh, Mungo got a 17. Okay. Matthew got an 18. Devin got a six. I'll just let each person roll. Yeah, that's probably gonna end. Yeah. Uh, four for Hamish. And two for Elwyn. Dwellin got an eleven. Barnaby got a fifteen. And Mindranar got a zero. Mindranar is looking on in shock as the ants continue to kill people. Yep. What do we He's, add he's to a our delicate artist. Your agility. So, Mum got a two. <laughs> Mandavi got an 18. Hess got a 10. And Visa Tui got a 9. Okay. Okay, Will got a 12. Sheila got a. 15. Pert got a 19. And poor Sten got a minus 2 to his form. So he has two. I told you I was in that mind for so long. Ants in two groups to make it a little bit simpler. Ants in my pants. Ants in my wedding pants. Here it is. Time to eat your brother. These ants are pretty slow. I guess the daylight uh, really bugs me. Listen to Super Mutant Radio. That's right. Are you being attacked by mutated ants? Well then. It's three dog. Ow! <laughs> Everyone had to go. So who plays Fallout that doesn't hate themselves? What? Oh no, 76. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was coincidence or that was timed. <laughs> Neither of us were looking at one another, so that was just a purely... <laughs> oh, you've noticed that we all look at you and you're not looking. <laughs> Wait, what? We've seen you, Ryan. We've seen you staring at him. We've seen you Although while I... we were staring at him because you were on the other side of him and our eyes met. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is kind of like a fence, like in uh, Home Improvement. The neighbor, Wilson. Wilson. Well, hey there, Tim. I'm being stabbed to death right now, but you can't see that because there's a fence in between us. <laughs> Wilson, you sure are quiet today. Oh my god, an ant ate everything below his upper face. <laughs> That's just hanging off the fence. The ant has two antenna right underneath his fisherman's hat. <laughs> they always wore. No, that's the reason you never see his body, is because it's a normal person head on an ant body, and he's just hanging on the other side of the wall. You see his Dear God. Do you? You just don't see his face. Yeah, you he do. He always hides it. Yeah, you do. Really? You, uh, see his you never see his entire face at once. Yeah. There's scenes where he don't see the... You see the bottom oh, half. Oh, yeah? Half. Mm. yeah. <sighs> Refreshing. You know, there's a scene where they go over to his house, and they're talking to him in the kitchen, and he has, like... Cupboards? He, no, he has his pots hanging... Oh from like hooks basically and then they're like covering the top half of his head 
This is the Home Improvement Podcast, where we talk about Tim Allen, his cocaine addiction, which led him to a life of stand-up comedy. Wait, he has a cocaine Very addiction? Cool. Sorry. <laughs> Very cool. Sorry. Very cool. He was just prosecuted for cocaine. I guess you're not really addicted to cocaine. It, it, Tim it, Allen was? Yeah, he has a mugshot. He has like a oh. nice curly mustache. <laughs> it's pretty neat. That is a requirement when you're doing cocaine. Uh, well, you, you better have a, out, you know, keep it up out of the way. a fine yeah. broom. Yeah. That way you can take some home with you. It's like a doggy bag for coke. This uh, episode of Dorker Realms brought to you by oh. Air. It's free and everywhere. <laughs> for Unless now. You live in Fleetville. For now. <laughs> yes, then it costs money. This could be your sponsorship for as low as 25 cents. You can Please find us on... Desperate. Yeah. <laughs> We've slashed our prices 75% off any Fiverr. So if you need me to draw what it'd look like if your children were or have actually you... yours. <laughs> or have... <laughs> I can uh, go into Photoshop and change their race a little bit. Or have me say something in a funny accent. Anything. <laughs> Those are comparable. Wow, that service makes me feel 80% less like a cuck. <laughs> oh my god, who does the first watch order in a cuck hole? <laughs> we go to bed. <laughs> Is it my turn? <laughs> One hour. Oh my god. We've got 16 characters between us, not to mention the ants. I, I was aware when Danny said cuck. Like, hey, Vox. Do you want ants? Because this is how you get ants. ants. Archer. You apparently have a wedding between an elven man. Okay, we're ready. A human. It is uh, Pert's turn. Okay. It's a lot of characters to order around. Yeah. All right. Don't worry. Uh, how close? Be less after this. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. How close am I to the ant? The nearest ant is about 20 feet away. Okay. So they're so kind of up on the stage mostly, and you're in the crowd. <clears throat> you know where the tables and stuff are. Okay. Wow. So peasants, for the record, they have no nothing, no skills. You have skills based on your occupation. You're uh, a con man, so you have you can do con man things. So I can t- con the ant into like a timeshare. <laughs> Obviously, you convince him that you're an ant too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, hoi, I like the lick of your mandibles. Because <laughs> I mean, so. Pert was one of the smart ones that had his knife on him. My quality... No, no, no. He wasn't one of the smart ones. He's a con man, so he snuck his knife in. Smart ones. That's what us con men say. <laughs> Instead of disingenuous or shady. Oh, okay. That's what you meant. Then yes, he's yes, one of the smart yes, ones. I'm a smart one. Okay. I, I really wish I had a backstab, but I'll try to stab this ant. If that's right. possible. Run up the, the front ant and try and stab him. So, uh, that's a 12. That hits the ant. Oh, sweet. It's so weird, I don't normally use dice. Do we have our non-weapon equipment on us? If you could reasonably have it at a wedding, yes. Okay. Three. I hit the ant for three. Three whole damage? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. You stab it into the ant's eye, and it's screeching and in horrible pain, but manages to stay up. You should have taken... The swamp land. It's a beautiful beachfront property. <laughs> all right. Next up is uh, Mondavi. I doesn't all count as a weapon. That you do not have that with you. I, I don't. Is there anything I might that my character can even do? You could try and punch him, or you could try and find a weapon. How do I punch him? You run up and you roll a d20, and then you roll a d3 modified by your strength. Eighteen. You hit. Are you... Which one are you attacking, by the way? Whichever one is closest to me. Okay. I don't have a D3. <sighs> Couldn't I just roll a D6? Most people yeah. don't you could have roll a D6, D6, yes. You can also roll a D4 and re-roll on a 4. Two. Two whole damage. That's right. <laughs> All right. You hit the ant squarely in the jaw, giving him a 1-2. One, Each one doing one. Yeah. Give him the one-two punch. Give him the one-one punch. Matthew. All the players have characters. Uh, Matthew. I can give last names too if you want from now on. <laughs> is going to trust in his uh, farmer's hardiness and 
and uh, join. Who was it that just attacked? Was it Mom? Mm-hmm. No, no we... Mondavi. And is going to jump on the back of the ant that Mondavi attacked, grabbing onto the antenna. Okay. Are you trying? You're trying to grapple this ant? Yes. Okay. Not expect this. <laughs> and like all the hymns in the church have like guns that's in them. I guess you grab onto the ant. Yeah. You you now have this ant by the antenna. Okay. I figured he'd be distracting because the antenna. Mungo, you're up. I'm going to snap a uh, leg off a table and use it as a makeshift club. Mungo has gained a club that will do 1d4 on his following turns. To attack the uh, the one that's part <laughs> stabbed. And grabbing the weapon is your turn. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, it is now Sheila's turn. What, what do I observe around me that could be used as a better weapon than the dagger I have? Better than the dagger you have? You could maybe try and get like a flagpole on the other side of the green or something like that? Ah ha ha, I tricked you. That's for my next character. Um, that was racist by Paul. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Joking. Okay, so I'll just attack the same ant Pert did, since I'm assuming they're together. Sure. Okay. Oh, wow. Twelves all day? Uh, no, eleven, because minus one to her strength. You missed. Okay. Uh, Barnaby. Or as I have it written down, Bornaby. Bornaby? <laughs> Bornaby supremacy? <laughs> Bornaby yes. killed by this funnel. Yeah. Bornaby's going to have a tough time moving something like a flagpole. But, because he is a halfling. The flagpole is also on the other side of the green, so you'd have to walk to it. Well, he get does it. have the one, the increased speed, but that probably won't make that much of a okay. difference. Bornaby's going to uh, try and uh, tumble beneath the legs of the ant that Matthew is grappling to an attempt to make it fall over so it will be easier to fight. Sure. What do I need to roll for that? You're trying to get this ant between the legs? Yeah, so what am I rolling against it? I guess an agility check. Okay. Uh, I roll a 12. You failed. <laughs> miserably. This ant is like super acrobatic. It, it backflips, landing perfectly back on its thorax in the exact position, and you're like, what the hell just Matthew happened? Matthew just hanging on for dear life the whole time. <laughs> now roll the natural 20. <laughs> oh, he just bumps against the legs, but because it's an ant, it has four legs, not... It has six legs as an ant. Right. It is now Will's turn. Okay. Oh, boy. Hi. My name's Will. Will. Will? Man, so I don't even have my steel tongs. <laughs> Why would you bring steel tongs to a wedding, Will? I flambéed <laughs> some manners. No, no. If you had been a flambéer, I would have let you keep your weapon. Oh. You're a blacksmith. You did not have your stuff. He's... <laughs> You are only this. You're now allowed to enjoy this. If anyone had had a job even remotely eligible for a wedding, I would have let you keep your stuff. I honestly considered the halfling dire, but I thought that was a bit of a stretch. Dire? Anyway. Maybe he could have his fabric there. He's <laughs> trying to sell it at the wedding. <laughs> just be like, see, I did these. You can come buy from me later. <laughs> okay. How far is the flagpole to me? About 25 feet away. And 20 feet is how far we run, or 30? You are a human, so you can run 30. Okay, but I wouldn't be able to... Well, you know what? Will's just going to go for that flagpole. Okay. That's he his spends turn. his time running to the flagpole and getting it. Yep. All right. Duellin. Duellin is going to grab up one of the chairs. Sure. And charge... Uh, he grabbed one of the chairs. Oh, that's his action. Right. Okay. Hess. Do pitchforks and shovels count as weapons? Yes. Well, families have to stick together, so I guess he's going to tackle the legs of the ant. <laughs> I'm trying to see if they can take it down. Okay, you're going to try and grapple the ant to the ground. Yeah, by attacking the legs. Sweet the legs. Attacking the legs or yeah. grappling? Grappling, grabbing the legs. Okay. What do I do? Roll a d20 and make the better results. 20. You grabbed his legs, and I assume this is the one where his antenna were grabbed, so yes. you now have this ant grappled to the ground, and it's trying to thrash, but can't effectively thrash. Nice. 
Okay. It's the wall of Satui? V Satui. V He. Hmm. He's gonna punch the same ant in the eye. Alright, he's gonna punch the eye, the ant in the eye. Uh, you need a d24 for this roll since this ant is downed and being held. 19. You punch this ant in the eye for 1d3 damage. The ant screams as you bash its eye in, just repeatedly punching it in the eye. We beat you bastards years ago! Why are you back? So, it is now ant number one's turn, who was fighting Hurt. He's going to fight at Hurt. Rolling a 16. Ugh. I'm not feeling very Hurt plus today. Dealing four damage. Tell, tell my mother, I said. Bleh. He grabs Perk by the head with his mandibles and squeezes, and Perk juice spurts everywhere. Oh, oh God! It's my fault. Oh, I think I've got a bit of Perk on me. Ant, Ant three, who is standing behind uh, Ant one, hisses and spits acid. At who grabbed uh, Ant two by the antenna? Matthew. Matthew. Spits acid at Matthew. Missing horribly. The acid just kind of splatters on the ground. Ant 4, who was behind Ant 2, spits acid at... Oh. I was going to say the lowest luck, but that is also Matthew. So, we'll say Mondavi. Also missing horribly. It is now Devin's turn. Is there any, uh... Like steak knives or anything on the tables that I could pick up and yes. throw. Yes, absolutely. Alright, I'm gonna try and grab one of those and throw you, it at the... Uh... You find a pile of, like, fancy steak knives at the corner of one of the tables. Throw it at the one that Pert attacks. I'll let you throw it in the same turn, but you'll have a, mi- a negative modifier to the roll of two. Because you're supposed to wait a turn to do that, but since you're throwing, I think it's fair. I miss okay. atrociously. <laughs> All right. It is now Ant's five through eight's turns. Can you name them? No, they cannot have names. They're ants from a hive. Okay. I'm naming Ant three Egbert. I named the royal guards later. Okay. <laughs> there will be royal guards later, apparently. It's an ant hive. Of course, oh. there will be. Ant 5 charges in at Matthew. He's very unlucky. You're not wrong. Biting him viciously. For four damage. He's at zero. It rips his leg off and throws it on the ground. And then clacks at you. (laughs) Is it taunting you? Let me just mark Matthew off here because I don't have to worry about him anymore. Ant Flat six pack. charges at Mondavi. Missing. Horribly. Avoided becoming a non-Davi. It's a foot. Ant seven spits some acid at Sten. Okay. Missing. Horribly. Yeah, in your face. Ant eight. Bingo, bingo. <laughs> who, uh, who tripped that other ant? That was... Visatui, I think. Okay, so Ant 8 is spinning acid at Visatui. Will a 13 hit? Yes. For 1d5 damage, dealing 5 damage. Oh, he did. So as the acid hits him, he just literally just starts to like scream, and you can just watch his flesh melt off of his body and the, the bone and muscles exposed, and then finally he just melts into a literal puddle. Here, <laughs> That could have been me. <laughs> Stan, lady. Hamish, you are up. Oh, I'm going to break uh, a leg off one of these tables. Use it as a club. All right. Didn't expect this kind of fighting at a non-dwarven wedding. Hamish now has a club. Mum. You said he did have his scissors. He has his scissors. He's going to stab the nearest ant in the eye after seeing that that's going to be pretty successful. Excellent. Oh, no, he's not. Seven. He does not stab the ant in the eye. He stabs at the ant, and it kind of backs up a little bit, clicking at him. Uh, Sten. 
So, you think you can spit at me? I don't know, today I'll either be Bane or someone that lives in a window. Oh, combine, just combine Bane and the Swedish chef together. I think that would be the best accent. <laughs> Are you an only grown in the dark? Oinkborg! <laughs> <laughs> Oinkborg, <laughs> <Morg. laughs> Steph! Flurgen Turgen! Who is Batman? Oh! You're a mountain! Spurgen Durgen! I fucking wish! <laughs> <laughs> I don't even. I just was like, I will break you, Ant, and the Ant was like, shush to four. Bindar! Mindranar? That's the one. You see a bunch of people around you dying, a couple ants have gone down, but it still doesn't look great, and you finally come out of your shop and go, buddy, do something. What do you do? I think Mindranar is going to try and, like, flee to a hiding place if you can. Is there any... You can run away. Yeah, Mindranar's going to try and run away. Okay, Mendragar. He, he's he's honestly not sure he, he wanted this wedding to happen because the Elven King wasn't happy about it. He doesn't even he doesn't even go for a hiding spot. He just runs. He just books it and he's gone. Oh, that worked. <laughs> I mean, sure. I mean, you can run away from the adventure, but it won't solve the adventure. Oh, so he can't come back and rejoin after the fight the ants have left or whatever. I mean, you can come back if the ants if. if if the party survives the ants, you can come back. Okay. If the party doesn't survive the ants, you're gone. Right, yes, of course. All right. Top of the order, Mondavi. Oh, one of my characters didn't get a turn. Who didn't get a turn? Uh, Elwyn? Oh, I, it should have been after Hamish. So you're not too far out of order. But Elwyn, you're up. All right, well, he's going to also go to throw some stuff. All right, give me a throw. He goes to the same pile. It's a very big pile of knives. All right. Now, the top of the order. Mondavi. Mondavi's going to cast around for anything that might work as a weapon. There are tons of things that work as a weapon around here. Several people have ripped legs off tables to use as clubs. I think he's going to... The possible suggestions in here, there are literally dozens, but it tells... It has me make the player decide. I think he's going to go for the classic, like, grabbing a wine glass and breaking it off. (laughs) A little shank? Yeah. All right, you got to... You got a stabby wine glass. <laughs> You're nice. like, yeah! Ha <laughs> ha! Wait, wait. That's the Do you go for the bottle on the podium or one of the ones on the, like, food table? This is important. Well, I don't think he was sitting close enough for the podi- to the podium for that. All right, so you grab so. one of the table yeah. bottles. Yeah. All right. Uh, that will be your turn. It'll be Mungo. Right. Time to sort out this ant business. <laughs> going to attack the one that Pert wounded. Excellent. The late Pert. The light part. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think a 10's gonna hit. Not quite. Close, though. Uh, Sheila. Oh, yeah, it's all my fault. <laughs> poor, poor part. I'll have to be the part plus plus. That he was not. Um, yeah, dagger time. Dagger time. Ooh, 16. You's, are you attacking the one that killed? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm attacking all right, the you same hit. one I was attacking. I just did a one damage. You stab it into the already stabbed eye and kind of wiggle it around, hitting the ant's brain, and it kind of spasms and then falls over dead. Yes. Da, 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 nice. da, da, for Bert. Burnaby. Or again, Burnaby. Whichever <laughs> you prefer. Okay, so Burnaby is fighting the same ant as the Vintners. Which of the Vintners is the one who's died? Lisa Tui. They killed the one they were fighting. Ah, okay. But... Visa Tui did not. Visa Tui helped trip. Visa Tui did not have any weapons. I was just if there was a weapon that was dropped by the dead Visa Tui, Barnaby was going no. To claim it Robin's to watch. people were like, "Wow, expert pugilists!" <laughs> and then they started fist fighting the ants. <laughs> Got to trash. <laughs> Barnaby is going to uh, rush over for one of those steak knives. All right, you grabbed a steak knife. That's your turn. Yep. Will. Like, geez, now I, that I got this spear, I can really make an ant kebab. All right, he runs back towards the stage, getting almost there. What? I thought I got the... Oh, I only ran towards it. Well, it was 30 feet away from the stage. Oh, the ant? No, they, the flag. Oh. There, it was the opposite end of the room, so you went and got it. 
you ran all the way back this turn. You're now on distance to attack next turn. Oh, okay, cool. That's just, it was Rock off, real. <laughs> sure, he got five feet back. He's still Sounds not like... able to hit the ants this turn. The flagpole will act as a spear doing 1d6 damage. Sounds like Damn. you combined um, Morty and Shaggy. Oh, jeez. Duellin. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I believe Duellen also grabbed a flagpole. Oh no, Duellen grabbed a chair. He did grab a That's chair. That's right. So that should have been pretty close at hand. So he's... yeah, you can attack this turn. Duellen is going to charge Trying the nearest end. Smash, smash it. Yeah, smash an right. ant with the chair. Roll for it. Okay. Eleven. You miss barely. Hess, you're up. Hess is going to grab a steak knife if he can. Sure, he runs over and grabs a steak knife. It is now ants three and four who are still not engaged. And uh, they spit acid at Sten. Well, one of them spits acid at Sten. Oh, you've come to play in the old spittoon game, girl. Misses horribly. Oh, that's what I thought. You got something on your chin. I'm for another. One of them spits acid at Mungo. Don't have a good feeling about that. Misses horribly. All right. It was now Devin's turn. Feel better about yourself. Okay, time to throw one of these steak knives. Are any of them wounded? There are currently no wounded ants. Okay, I'll just throw it at one of the ants. Uh, 18. Oh, you throw it very well. Nice straight... Throw. Four damage. Oh, oh man, nice. you throw it, and dead center in between the eyes, the ant spasms for a second, and falls over dead. Ha! How do you like that? I was an understudy for the knife thrower in the circus once, you know. Hey, that was a good shot, says the halfling. All right. Thanks. <laughs> I will say that you killed Ant 8, throwing it over the heads of some of the ants in front of it to get rid of one of the acid spitters. I guess you could say he ate it. Ant 5 <laughs> viciously attacks at Mungo. <laughs> Ants apparently don't appreciate puns. I didn't say that pun. Fumbly. <laughs> Ooh. That's right. We gotta, we gotta pull out Silly the blighter. Find the fumble table. Give me a moment here. It appears that the <laughs> ant is vacant and nerfeeds. <laughs> Stop me if you heard this one. So a flurg in the bird snit and snort snit. Then fucking harder. <laughs> Anyways. What? I'm pretty sure I wasn't drunk yet. <laughs> oh, then you have not been initiated. <laughs> oh, this should go very well. Why do you wear the mask? Because my accent is so thick. <laughs> I used to play a harmonica, and then I got into an accident. All right. The ants' acid... Oh, wait. No, this is... Acid? (laughs) This ants, like, tries to clamp its mandible on Mungo, but, like, hits a bad angle or something, and, like, one of its mandibles actually breaks. (laughs) Nice. Um, Okay. Ants number six will attack... Mum, who tried to stab him. Missing. Nice. Ant number seven will spit acid at Will. Oh, no. Will's pretty far still. I can't hit Will. Sten. Just because I'm Mrs. short doesn't mean you should spit on me. Hamish. Oh, I'm going to get in there and smack him with a table leg. Excellent. Thirteen. Hits. For damage. Jeez. You just beat the shit out of one, <laughs> one of those uh, those ants. Bludgeon- Never interrupt a dwarf when he's about to get drunk at a wedding. Bludgeoning <laughs> it to death. Just repeatedly smashing it in its head. That's yeah. right. Hell hath no fury like Elwin. Uh He's going to throw one of these steak knives. Excellent. Probably pretty badly. Yeah, that's a ten. <laughs> that does not hit. Mum. Mum, seeing what everybody else has been doing. Oh, no, he has his scissors. He's going to stab the closest ant with his sure. scissors. Oh, no, he's not. Seven. Uh, all right, he does not stab it. Uh, Sten. So I'm engaged with the ant, right? Because I, I punched it last time? 
Yes. Uh, okay, so it's still all right. Is there any um, weapons around me nearby? No. You're no. Fighting an ant. All right. Screw it. Fine. I just will fight you. Oh, I probably picked the wrong battle. I I hit a nine. You missed. Shit. <laughs> Mondavi, <laughs> your turn. Mondavi is going to stab with his wine glass. Yeah, <laughs> shank the ant. Seventeen. You shank that ant. Shanked him for one d four damage. Three. You shank that ant real good, but not fatally Aww. good. That ant is very upset as you repeatedly stab it with your little glass shank. Mungo. Right, let's give this another try. That's a 20, natural. Do I crit? You do, do crit. crit. I don't remember how that works exactly, but you do crit. <laughs> peasant crit. I wish I was a peasant. <laughs> Poor oh. Mungo. Yes. I have to check what the crit for a club is real quick. And then we'll have it for you. Shortly. Yabba dabba do. <laughs> How do you know what the, uh, oh, your crits for being like your level, right? Or like being a level zero peasant or whatever. It's not your I weapon. I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. One second. I can do this. We got this. We sure do, Bon. <laughs> huh. 1d4 on crit table one. That's a three. Roll me an additional D3. One. So you hit the ant, but it like slides and then you kind of crack it a second time, catching it on like a weak point in its skull carapace and it just shatters. You you shattered its head and it falls over dead. Nice. Nice. Sorted. <laughs> <laughs> Sheila. Oh dear. Okay. Well. Old man Stan is the second best dwarf here, which isn't saying much since there's only two. Uh, I'll go and do his stabs. <laughs> Critical miss. Minus one, so zero. Roll me a d4. Three. I believe your weapon just broke, but well, let me double check. Uh. I, I bought this from... Oh, wait. Where'd it go? Oh, from Stan, yeah. Oh, that's what you get for buying your weapons at Ikea. I have an employee discounter. Shots fired. <laughs> no. No? Your weapon, your grip on your weapon has become disturbed. Your next attack roll has a minus two modifier. Oh, what's new? Minus three. Great. Barnaby. Barnaby Jones. Now, Barnaby one of Jones. the vintners, like, Stab, but didn't kill an ant, right? Is that ant still up? No, but there is a different damage to ant. Okay, Barnaby's just gonna hurl one of those steak knives at sure. one of those ants. Darn, it's a ten. You miss. Mm. Uh, Will. Okay. Got your flagpole ready? I'm all ready. Ooh wee. What are you doing? I'm gonna charge the nearest ant. Okay. Okay. Are you serious? <laughs> Got a two. Well, that becomes a four with your charge modifier. That's still not very good, though. Oh, Gee. Duellin. Duellin still has a chair. He does still have a chair. Is the ant he tried to attack still up? No. That one is dead. Okay, then he will move to attack the, one, the other one that is already injured. Sure. Chairs do what, a d4? Yes, it's a okay. club. All right. It's a very big sense. club. Well, that'll be a 19. You hit this ant squarely in the head, smashing your chair. There we go, for one damage. Killing the ant, yeah! mortally. And now that the chair's smashed, you just have the leg and it makes a near perfect club. Hey, well, excellent. <laughs> Still got club left over. <laughs> nice. All right, everyone, time to go clubbing. Yes. I hate that. I hate everything about it. Tess is going to stab the injured ant with his... There are no current injured ants. An, There's two a, ants a left. A new ant. A new ant. With his steak knife. Stabbing the ant with a steak knife. Go carve off a piece to eat later. Sounds pretty good, actually. Probably nice and high in protein. 17? You stab that ant, doing 1d4. Two. Pretty good. You, you stab it, and it, it <laughs> looks very upset. And you kind of wiggle it around a little bit, and a little ichor comes out. Ichor? 
Yeah, they don't have blood. They got ichor. All right. Do its frows furrow. So that we <laughs> do, it, do its frows burrow? <laughs> its frows do burrow. Okay. Well. The ant tries to bite you back. Oh, no. Nah. <laughs> it doesn't do well. It's it's after that stabbing, it's not doing great. <laughs> yeah. That's what you get for trying to non-consensually Devin? bite. Time to throw another one of these knives. At the injured or uninjured ant? I'll go for the injured one. All right. That's an 11. You miss. Right. Ant 7 spits acid at will. Okay. Rolling a 12. <laughs> oh, it burns. Doing a really good a job at killing all these characters Three so damage. Far. Mm-hmm. Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Is he dead? <laughs> no. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's not dead. He has one oh, life. All right, there, we laddie. I, 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 I don't know. It keeps eating more of me. <laughs> <laughs> the, the acid glob hits you like square in the chest, and it just burns through your shirt. And oh, my yellow shirt! <laughs> burning all of your skin. And uh, but I'm still alive. Eats away most of the flesh and starts burning up the muscle, and it kind of fizzles out. And you notice that like. Once it's no longer burning, it kind of gives off a uh, a garlic smell instead of the sulfur smell it was giving before. This is not a better predicament. <laughs> oh, something smells delicious. Stop looking at me, you creepy dwarf. Hey, Didn't you know that garlic pairs well with wine? Oh, time to smash them. Don't hurt me. That's a 16. You hit the ant. Three damage. Smashing it to bits. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't remember what weapon Hamish has. Hamish has a club, right? That's right. Smashing it to bits. You, uh, instead of going for the head, he kind of like swooped its legs, taking out three of them at once, and it fell on its side, and then he hit it right in the middle, and it just kind of, you got this satisfying crack, like you were breaking a crab apart with a crab claw breaker thingy. Nice. Oh, they're a bit bigger than normal, but they smash just the same. <laughs> Elwyn, your turn. I guess I'll throw another one of these knives. Not that they're doing much. Oh, it's a seven. <laughs> you'll you'll get them someday, Ellen. <laughs> Mum. Do I get points for trying? You're doing better than Mindenar. Mindenar. <laughs> Mum is gonna stab. One of the ants hasn't been attacked yet, right? One of the ants is the only ant left. Oh, he's gonna stab that one. No, he's not. He attempted to stab the ant. Uh, Sten? And now I know you. there's been one dwarf here that's been pulling his weight. Here's your fur. <laughs> I'm going to attack you with these brutish arms of mine. <laughs> Using my 16. That'll hit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the 1d3? Yes. Pl- modified by your strength. Which is nothing. You can roll a d6 for that. But I have this sure, I'm device just, I'm that allows me to roll dice, so I do not have two. All right. He takes uh, two damage. You hit the ant in the eye, and it's kind of like, ah! It looks like, uh, you know, like two boxers when they go at each other for a while, and oh, you know, bruised yeah. up. I've seen yeah. two boxers make out in the back of a... <laughs> uh, oh, this haunt looks just like two boxers. Mondavi? <laughs> <laughs> Two box Shakur. Yeah. Mondavi's gonna try and stab the ant in the side with his wine glass shank. <laughs> <laughs> Thirteen. That hits for one d four. Three. You kind of stab it in there, and you can feel your shank breaking, and you just kind of like with the last shove, you let go, and then just push the bottle all the way in, and the ant kind of makes a like, and then falls over dead. Yes. And uh, that's all. Of you've ants. killed all of the ants. Now, before we move on, let me uh, let me mark off the deaths real quick. Tell me if your a character's died in their first name. Matthew has died. All righty, Matthew. I'm just gonna cross this off here. I don't have to Visa, worry about him anymore. Lisa Tui. Oh, good. The one I had spelt completely wrong. I can get rid of that. Ditch digger. Sad. Sad to see him go. Oh, who's gonna dig the ditches for him? Is that it? Only two, huh? <laughs> no, my best character, Pert. 
Oh, that's right. Pert juice, remember? That's right. Is it on you? Probably. <laughs> Who digs the ditch for the ditch digger? Is that like a Latin <laughs> proverb? So, can Elwyn investigate the uh, the wine up on the podium? Uh, let me let me read the after battle scene first, yes. though. Okay, we killed the Ant Men. Oh, actually, Ant Men. Nope. We get a picture time first, Annie. Oh. If I can find my phone. Hmm, usually, it's in my pocket. That's. Picture time, picture time. Picture time, come on, grab your friends. It always works. Hey, grab your friends, it's picture time. Oh, actually, oops, we have some other pictures I need to send you. (laughs) Oh. Bonus picture time, it's a picture time extravaganza. There are your family seals and your family trees. Oh. Not hugely important, but you know, some background information. You I have. got a literal seal for my family seal. <laughs> and then we have this one here. Give you a little look at the ants. So, uh, first thing you notice is that the sulfur smell that was exuding from many of the ants is now very much a, a garlicky smell. Why do these ants smell so damn good? Has oh, things. Me hungry. I was wondering the same thing. As things settle down after the attack, the PCs witness the following. Frezzo Letty rushes up to you with his staring in his eyes. His head! His head has been taken! For the love of God, those things took my brother's head! A strong voice booms out. This was your doing! You see Sir Hedrick Letty, town noble and father of the groom, stab an accusatory finger at Loramund. Whitegrass, the bride's uncle. You never approved of the marriage, and now these elven-conjured insect fiends have taken my son's head. You and your kind will pay. Liar, retorts Loremond. Uh, you damn tree killers! It was you who tried to poison Lady Nyala. I will make your puny human, your puny human lifespan even shorter if you do not retract your accusation. And they begin to kind of throw fists at each other, and finally... Some of their family members kind of pull them off of each other. Oh, just when it was getting good. You don't want um, any of this. You see that... Well... There's still a few people sitting around from both families. You have the father and mother of both sides. The, uh, the priest that did the ceremony is still here. And the younger brother of Hort are still in the area. Uh, Danny, you want to investigate the wine? Yes. I think Duellen is also curious about that as well. Uh, you notice that it is a bottle of a very rare vintage that all of you have heard of. It is a bottle of uh, Brandolin Red. Ah, named a very, after a member of my family, a as very a of fact. rare um, bottle of wine and very sought after. There is still about half of a bottle left. Is this what, uh, wasn't the bride drinking and then she started coughing or something? Yes. Was the, she was drinking from this? Well, she was drinking from a glass. You presume it was this bo- from this bottle. If I sniff the open it bottle, it smells it like smell? a delicious wine. Oh, yeah, no, no, you should drink it. It'll had, be fine. Had the groom also drunk from the, this? The groom had also drunk from it. Not so sure I feel like a drink in these circumstances. It's really the only way to test if it's safe or not. Go ahead. Well, you well, feel the, free to have um, some. The groom also drank from the same wine, so it is probably more her goblet that is the issue than the wine itself. Oh, yes, of course. C- can I smell the goblet? Does the goblet <laughs> smell strange? It smells exactly the same. Mm. A little bit garlicky, but that you notice that's probably from the acid on the bottom of it. <laughs> Then you notice that Will standing right behind you, still smelling of garlic. <laughs> so Nala is also dead. <clears throat> no, she's no. she's here. Oh, okay. You can talk to her if you want. Yes, uh, Duellen is going to check on her. The bride. She narrowly survived the attack and keeps slipping in and out of coherency. She seems to be in shock, and sh- all she will whisper is, "Oh, my poor sweet hurt, hurt." Duellen tries to, uh, you know, say words of assurance and, and comfort her and. Uh, in the process, see if ask what maybe you know. If see if if he can ascertain why she was coughing. What about the wine made her react that way? Uh, as you try and talk to her and like calm her, her uncle comes up and he's like, "That damned uh, Letty family poisoned her. That's what it is." 
They put, they slipped it into her bottle, and Hort didn't get any. You can't trust him. But, but Hort was marrying her. Why would they want to poison Nala? They just wanted the dowry. We don't need the dowry. We're really well off. All this is of at us. the point. Uh, of- it's a blessing he was killed, honestly. Can you imagine the abomination their offspring would have produced? You uh, shut half your... human, half elf monstrosity? A freak of nature. I didn't have anything to do with it, but I'm glad it happened. You know what? If you can prove that they were in on it, or really just anyone, because I don't want to be blamed for it, I'll reward you handsomely. This is who speaking? The Uncle Loramund. Ah. Barnaby sidles up at this point. I did hear uh, the elven king, king of Elfland, wasn't happy. We've all heard that rumor, cousin. (laughs) Tell someone else. (laughs) God, these distant white grass families just trying to talk to me like they're equals. Dwellin says, well, I will certainly look into this, see if we can find out any evidence as to who was involved. Excellent. You also notice that her father is nearby. Lotrin? Any, if anyone, yes, if anyone wants to talk to him. There's also the rest of the Letty family are still sticking around, and the priest. Does uh, Can Mindranar come trotting back at this point? He had hoped to gather some guardsmen to help with this he was, uh, kerfuffle. Gather some guardsmen. He was hunting, hiding under the gift table. Yeah. Oh, you, you uh, <laughs> brave Sir Robin in that situation, huh? <laughs> Well, did you find the under-table guards, laddie? Did you bring them back in their battalions to drive the ants from our lands and cleanse us of these accursed elven conjured beasts? You seem to be covered in some sort of acid spit. Oh, wait, no, that's urine. Hess, Hess and Mondavi being relatively, at least through like family stories, familiar with the whole ant thing, huh? are going to look around without straying too far to see if they can maybe find where the ants came from? Um, well, they, it looks like they dug out of the ground, and you can see kind of like a collapsed <coughs> burrow, but you do notice a trail of blood g- g- leading through the forest to the south. A very a very obvious trail of blood. The, the direction that the head got carried? Yes. Well, I'll take a wee sip of the brandle and red. <laughs> Excellent. Roll me a D5. Mm. You need one, one of those I... somewhere. Will it affect a dwarf the way it affected an elf? <laughs> Maybe it's this one. No, it ain't that one. Still in me bag. Oh, me so... sack of of die. Oh, there it is. My die sack. Do, do I get healed in between adventures, or, or do I just have the one? I don't know. Maybe talk to some people. Uh, get, excuse Maybe me. someone can offer you some healing. Please oh, tell. I rolled a five. <laughs> The PC releases a long and horrific belch during which a demonic voice can be heard. (laughs) She will not rest until her bones are returned to him. Oh, sorry. I don't know where that came from. Does that that always happen when you drink? There's one more glass of Brandle and Red in the bottle. No. (laughs) Absolutely the fuck not. Well, it usually happens, but the voice isn't so clear. (laughs) Well, that looked fun. Barnaby will guzzle down the last one. Give me a D5 roll. (laughs) You know... Four. (laughs) You know, I hate to wax philosophical about my own bodily functions, (laughs) but uh, Brandle and Red, who was uh, part of our family, some creepy old elf uh, bought her bones, so uh, that might have something to do with the creepy demon voice that came roaring out of my stomach. Oh, he wanted to buy them. Sorry, the brandle in red went right to me head. Damn good stuff, though, let me tell you. Could you be a little more sensitive? It was oh. super delicious. The best wine you've ever had. Right. My brother's head, or my cousin's head, has been severed by an ant and taken away. Uh, yeah, and Bert's head All got right. smashed like a Thoughts grape. You think? Uh, it's pretty much juice. That's what you get for drinking the brandle Will was going to go see the priest? Yeah. I just need to talk to him, and ow! I still hurt. (laughs) Can you believe what happened here? So terrible. My God, my son. You look like you're in terrible shape. Let me, uh... Let me try laying my hands on you a little bit. (laughs) 
Uh, okay. Let me, uh, Letting check. the priest lay his hands on you at a wedding. What can go wrong? <laughs> well, I, 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 Oh, God above. <laughs> Let me heal this child. Oh, you seem to be related to Sten. <laughs> You're different. <laughs> He's enveloped by a glowing light, and he kind of like raises his hands up, and then he lowers them to both of your shoulders, and you feel eight hit points worth of healing surge into you as he wow. makes you right as rain. Wow! <laughs> do, 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 I think you just witnessed do, do. a miracle. Your your skin just like re or all of your your burnt muscle like regrows, and then the skin grows above that, and all the scars you had before are just gone. It's like clean, brand new skin. And then your shirt regrows because, you know, he's just that magical. <laughs> you, know, and, you know, Father, if you're ever looking for a new occupation, uh, you'd fit right in with the circus. And now he says, I must go, for <laughs> God will not forgive my sins today so easily. And Wait, what did you I do? I have to go to the church and strap myself until he gives me forgiveness. No, what did you do? I need to know And he, he leaves. No, you stand right there. I'm all like yoked with Jesus juice. <laughs> hey. I failed to protect them. Oh, oh, that's what you did. All right. Well, you're fine. <coughs> and then slowly but surely. All right. My voice is oh, I'm back to the old Will. Mm. All right. D did the priest have a name? Father Geralt. He's going to become a witcher after this. I know. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Geralt, yes, I would like to lay with the elf demon woman. I feel like I'm in one of my cousin I mean, Tom's stories from you, his adventures. Are you guys, uh, what are you guys doing? Are you go follow the blood trail? Are you going to try and talk to some more people? What's happening here? We roll the bodies and check their prison pocket. <clears throat> so we've talked to the priest. He just feels super guilty. We talked to... Well, he also um, healed you. Oh, no, I really super appreciate that. <laughs> but, like, as far as leads go. Were there any other notable people here that we didn't speak to? Lortrin Whitegrass, Master Frezzo Letty, Lady Wichitella Letty, Sir Hedrick Letty, and the body of Hort Letty. Let's, Can we talk right. to the body? Let's do well, a how you feeling, old Hort? <laughs> Let's do a Letty. Right there, buddy. <laughs> now decapitated, Master Hort is remembered as a friendly youth with no enemies. As a young noble, he enjoyed falconry and archery. Everyone knows, oh, despite God. the tension it caused their two, uh, between their two families, Hort very much loved Nayla. Man, I learned a lot from this corpse. <laughs> it, was, it was on a, a note on his like pinned to his jacket. I, I returned the note to its proper place. <laughs> uh, out of respect for dear Hort. Excellent. I was just going to say, I wanted to do a Letty powwow between the Mistress Letty and then the other Letty's. You want to go talk to... Yes, both. By yourself? Uh, uh, With all, just the leddies? All the leddies, yeah. Smart. You want to text it to me? No. No, okay. it's fine. She's like, hey, uh, you know, I don't, want, I don't want my husband, Hedrick, to hear this, but I don't think the elves are behind this. I just... It just doesn't seem like something they do. Why wouldn't they kill or attack Nayla and kill other Whitegrass, attack other Whitegrass family members? Plus, you know, we know that giant ants have attacked the city before. Good point. It's just the timing seemed kind of thematic. <laughs> okay. And then the other Letty. We Hort or Lezo? <clears throat> oh, <laughs> Fre Frezzo, sorry. Frezzo, of course. His brother. I can't believe they fucking did that. Those goddamn ants and those fucking white grass. I hope they all die. We need to go retrieve his head. To uphold the honor of the Letty family. Yay, give me a fourth character. <laughs> uh, well, get to it. We. You Come lesser on. branch families are beholden. Oh, okay. You're going to be like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking asshole. So we walk away and just be like, he's right, clearly so delirious. Poor, poor brother. Um, Minjanar and Duellen are going to kind of huddle up with uh, Uncle Lotrin. The uncle is Loramund. Oh, oh, Lotrin is the father, right? What are uh, Danny and Robin's characters doing? Well, I can't really have my character address the the whole group like I wanted to um, with all of them 
sort of grouping off into their, you know, doing their private sure. conversations. So I'm waiting to, for that to be done. Okay. Danny? Uh, we don't really have any connection to any of this at okay. the moment. So <laughs> we're just kind of <clears throat> standing around. All right. You're talking to Lortrin? Lortrin. Yeah, Lort- Lortrin. Okay. He looks yeah. very distraught. Um, he looks a little despondent, but he's still trying to care for his daughter as best he can. So, um, I don't suppose you think maybe this has something to do with, uh, oh, what's, what's, sorry, what's her name? Dorthala? Dorthala? His wife that disappeared? Oh, I, I don't, I don't think so, but I'm sorry, this all just reminds me of darker times in my life, and he kind of tears up a little bit, and you see a little, like, elven, milky white tear go down his cheek. Danny, roll me a d20. Are, are they synthetics from aliens? 16. <laughs> so you, you kind of see this from a distance, and as you see the tear run down his cheek... Um, one second. I'm texting you a thing. Mm-hmm. More demon gas. <laughs> oh! <laughs> tell me... <laughs> you that become was so great. <laughs> you become the new uh, Zartoth or whatever, the fortune teller. Um, Zoltan. Zoltan, thank you. But look, if you can, uh, if you can find any of Hort's remains or, or really any other remains, this is Lotrin. Yes, mm-hmm. that would be really great. It could help alleviate the uh, suspicion around the town and. I'll also pay for any bottles of Brandolin Red you find, since it looks like the ants were headed in the direction of the old vineyard. I'll make my way over to uh, your little group. Oh. I, uh, if there's any way that we can help, we'd be happy to do so. Well, as I was just telling him here, if you can... Locate any of the remains of Hort to help alleviate the suspicions and really any other remains of interest of any kind. I would pay for those as well. Uh, Well, despite your very strange and somewhat creepy inflection there, I do feel moved to uh, offer assistance and recover any parts of poor Hort that we can. He was a good boy. We appreciate that. We want to mend this tear that has been rent between our families. Hey, uh, apparently there has been a rent between you and some other family. <laughs> All I know is that you can't trust a vintner as far as you can throw him. That's right, I said it. Well, I thank you for your heartfelt uh, one of outburst, <laughs> and thank you. Wasn't one of your uh, family members married into the vintners? That's right, she was. And you know what we got for that? A dowry of fuck all. <laughs> oh, is that uh, is that all your family members are good for you for? Is how much money you can get out of them? Sheeps and camels and shit like that. I'll have you know that we're not all rich, stuffy, hoity-toity noble families. You know, like you, just rolling you kn- around in your bloody riches and then looking down on the rest of us and not even giving us the dowry you rightfully owe us. You know, just because like some of the family makes wine doesn't mean we all get a share in that. <laughs> well, it wouldn't surprise me to hear that the vintner wasn't paying their fair dues. What were you saying? Oh, I was saying it's, uh, we're at 115. Okay. But I, uh, (sighs) Sheila goes and she takes her finger and she looks at one of the white grasses and is like, come over here. Any of them that are watching the white grasses. Apparently none of them are. Okay. So then she goes up (laughs) and taps the shoulder of one of the white grasses. Um, Barnaby's the, the only one who's not currently involved in a conversation, so. Okay. Um, look. Uh, Lizzo, our our brother, he's super pissed, but I think he's just emotional. And Mistress Letty? Frezzo. Oh, Frezzo. It's a cousin. Yeah, Uh, yeah. Uh, Okay, Frezzo. Uh, But, um, yeah, we don't think you guys had anything nefarious to do with it uh, on on the lady's side, and I'm apt to believe her. Well, that's good, because as far as I'm aware, 
None of these people had anything to do with it. I mean, everyone was pretty, you know, some of the elves were a bit tense because, you know, everybody knows that the elven king wasn't terribly happy about this thing going on. Oh, no. But none of the family members really had a problem. I mean, everyone loved Nala, and Hort was a great boy. So Exactly. It, well, so it's really good to hear that. It seems like uh, the two, two of my kin that uh, didn't get killed by them ants are looking to maybe go after uh, the rest of Hort. So if you wanted to join in on that, I think us working together might do great to, to help maybe uh, assuage all of these tensions. I'm as, telling you, it was the evil elven demon. As, he wants Brandolin's bones. As you two are, are you drunk, Hamish? Are you, are you, <laughs> as you two are talking, you hear uh, Sir Hedrick Letty, the father of Hort Letty, kind of bellow, all Letty family members, I charge you with finding his head and readying yourselves for war with the white grass. We <laughs> will go to war in one week's time. Um, now, find my son's head or any evidence you can of that the white grass did indeed perpetrate this crime. Um, I have to go over here now. It's good talking <laughs> to you. You're all right, Sten. <laughs> Huh? This is Sheila. I know. I was asking if he's all right. Oh, well, dwarf to dwarf. I have to say, I um, I I really tore up that stage. <laughs> I'm fine. I, I really wish I got a swig of that demon burp you got. Really and ran. Red. Oh, maybe we'll find some along the way. Look, I told you not to marry one of those crazy elves. <laughs> I didn't do it. I wouldn't do it with his dick either, but <laughs> as you understand. <laughs> all right. You have now talked to everyone in the thing. <laughs> Love is blind. We gotta keep this moving around along. What, do we kind of have a little dwarf dwarf? Oh, you can. I just want you to be walking towards the crime scene while doing it. Okay. Unfortunately, we have to have a buffer between the white grasses and us, so... We're on pins and needles. Thin ice. Well, hopefully we'll get it all sorted out. Find poor horts. I assume you all go and gather up your actual equipment. Meet back here and yes, follow the absolutely. blood trail. Yep. Can I can I take a few of the steak knives with me? <laughs> yes, you could take some steak knives. <laughs> Excellent. And I will break all Ooh. these chairs to have more clubs than I can carry. No. I shall return on my pony as we ride off to adventure uh, with Mungo <laughs> in the lead. Yes, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> can I uh, keep that that spear? Uh, yes. But out of the encounter, it will break on any roll, 10 or less. Okay. Well, that's better than his current equipment, so. Sure. Yeah. Mungo runs his thumb across the surface of the strange-looking rock that he's had since he was a child, hoping for luck, as he will lead the way. <laughs> as you travel further from Portonel, the path becomes overgrown with weeds, thistles, and dead sage. The trees eventually thin out, giving way to row upon row of withered vines that once flourished in the abandoned Longbow Vineyards. An ancient path leads through the middle of the vineyards towards a collection of decrepit buildings, and a smaller path leads deeper into the dark and tangled fields of brambles, which you can only imagine once served as grapevines. <clears throat> uh... Perhaps once long ago, the twisted rows of grapevines were manicured and cultivated by the vineyard workers, but now only a tangled mass of thick vines, uh, pregnant with tumorous growths of dark, heavy fruit remains. Okay, so you just entered into the vineyards south throughout the north of them. Um, to your right is a pathway, and to your left is a pathway, and straight ahead is overgrown brambles that were probably once grapevines. We're trying to follow the blood trail, right? Uh, at this point, it's kind of dispersed and you can you can no longer follow it. You followed it to the vineyards, you can't follow it really here. Do we know approximately where the... Do any of the vintners know approximately where the hole for the original hive was? No. Are there any distinguishing characteristics to the two paths to our left and right? The one on your right looks like it was kind of a secondary path in the vineyard. It's a little bit narrower and more overgrown. You can still walk it easily enough, but uh, 
to your left, you can kind of see some of the old winery buildings in the distance. And there's no signs of, like, trampled... uh... No, there are no signs of anything. Not even that a trained animal trainer could spot? You can give me a roll. (laughs) You'll have a minus two to the roll, because it's a little off uh, specialty for you. My, what a dramatic evening it is. Delwyn, weren't you looking for Sorry. signs of the... Uh... I meant to say you should have a plus two and roll a d10, but this works too. Devin, weren't you looking for signs of the... of the... ants? What? Beautiful. Overcast slightly. <laughs> I can feel the adventure in the air. All right, well, he's useless. Where are we going, <laughs> lads? <laughs> There's no sign of... I. Sheila's a magic, uh, a wizard's apprentice. Mm-hmm. Ooh, You're very good at reading books and searching <laughs> for information and yeah. large indexes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Is there anything in the books that I could have known to nope. see? No. So I'm just going to search the vineyard. <laughs> or not the vineyard. Well, I vote that we head to the old vineyard buildings first. And it's not just because there might still be a few <laughs> bottles of courage that we can <laughs> scoff. Well, I don't know if we want to. Drink them, because remember, he said he'd pay some good money for that. I so would I. However, I was thinking, um, <laughs> if, 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 if the ants came from somewhere, uh, it probably wouldn't be the place that's already got the buildings, because people would have noticed that. Maybe the other path is where they came down. Well, Isn't except that? that the buildings are all abandoned, so that would be a really good place to hide a big-ass hole to crawl out of. Well, I suppose that's a good point, too. We split up, gang. That's a terrible I idea. No. That's a good idea, wee laddie. We no. have three people in every party. <laughs> All right, Sheila, if you want, you can go down one path yourself while the rest of us go. <laughs> okay. No, not okay. I was joking. Don't go. <laughs> Which of your characters was it that spoke up? Mondavi. I think, actually, Mondavi makes a pretty good point. Let's go check out the, the Vintner buildings. All right. All right with you? I'm fine with that. All right, so you go down the left path. And uh, after a little ways, you come to an old pond that you assume was probably the irrigation pond. But uh, it's been a while. A pond with foul, stagnant water Mm. lays stinking before you, like a cancer festering in the earth. Several shallow troughs, once used for irrigation but now crowded with detritus, finger their way out towards the crowded vine fields. An occasional air bubble burps up atop the algae-covered pool, releasing nature's flatulence. And while the water is indeed murky, you can just make out the sh- uh, make out something shining at the bottom of the pond. It's at times like this when I regret ever coming up out of the ground. I don't know how you deal with this surface world. Yeah, no, we shouldn't go anywhere near there. Let's uh, let's uh, let's keep going. Will There's goes and pokes treasure. at the metal. With it's his it's. Spirit pretty deep but like as you you put your hand in the water it does it just feels like kind of dirty water there's nothing wrong with it <laughs> i wouldn't will just okay i'm going for it he dives Go for in. it will he uh he grabs the thing and he he pulls it up to the surface and it looks like the bloated corpse of portanel's tanner of uh, volkner black who's been missing for a couple days oh that's not and uh the, the shiny object was a, a helmet on his head I got a helmet! Um, well, and well. Oh, no, not Duellen, sorry. As you pull it out, you see some movement in the water, and Minjunar. a zombified alligator head pops out of the water and kind of makes a gurgling. I, I tried to tell you not to go anywhere near there. This is a good place to end this episode of Dorker Realms right before everyone gets murdered by a zombigator. <laughs> Zombadile? Thanks for listening, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Where I kill everyone. (laughs) It'll probably be a short one. That does it for today's episode of Dorker Realms. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly of all, tune in next week.